welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I've gotten asked by a few people to do a blue death fainting beetle care guide and I've had these guys for a couple months. I'm pretty confident in their care. They're relatively easy animals. So I figured I would go ahead and give that to you guys this week. I will be showing footage of these guys, but I will not be getting them out. I don't really have a surface to hold them on if I do get them out and it's just a lot more hassle, so I'm going to show you clips of them and stuff. I'm just not going to be handling them in this video today. And of course, I always want to start these videos off with saying that I am in no means an expert. Changes in care happen all the time. If I do mess anything up, please let me know in the comments below so I can fix that. Before you get a pet, always, always, always watch several care guides and do as much research as you can to make sure that you are giving your pet the best life possible and that they will work for you. So let's just go with some basic knowledge. Where are they from? How long do they live? That kind of stuff. So their lifespan is about like eight years, I think, in the wild. They are found in the Southwest United States in some deserty areas. That is kind of their climate is like desert, very arid. So as their name implies, they play dead and they are blue. So they play dead as a defense mechanism and they're blue from a type of it's kind of like a sunscreen. It helps them from the UV rays of the harsh sun in desert areas. So, and uh, you might notice if you do get these guys and they're shipped to you, you'll probably notice that they are darker in color. They usually arrive a little darker. That will, the blue coloration will come back within a couple weeks. Usually it just means the humidity is too high. So there's not huge concern. Mine came in pretty dark and now they're like a really pretty powder blue. I get mine from Bugs in Cyberspace, which I will link down in the description below. I think their limit is still three, however. And the reason for that is the only honestly downside to these guys is that they are typically wild caught. And as much as that sucks, because it always sucks to get wild caught, um, a lot of keepers are working on breeding them and we think that we've actually cracked the code in the hobby, so. So they have extremely tough exoskeletons, but I still wouldn't like recommend these for most kids. They are definitely like beginner level, baseline care, easy as anything, but they're not really as handleable. Obviously they're insects. Most insects don't make great pets for most kids just because they are more fragile, they're smaller, you know, that sort of thing. But um, yeah, if your kid's more of like an observer, I think this would make some wonderful pets. So let's go right into the care guide with housing. What are you going to put your animal in? And the first question that everyone always asks is if they are solitary or if you can cohab them. These guys, you can cohab. I have three in this enclosure right now actually, but they, they do very well together. So you can have a very simple setup to a very extravagant setup with these guys. The base of what you're going to need is an enclosure big enough to house your beetles. The general rule of thumb, as far as I heard, is two beetles per gallon. I personally would give them more than that just for the sheer fact that they do move around a lot for me. They, they're they very active. So I like to give them more, but I've heard the general rule of thumb for bare minimum is two beetles per gallon. These guys cannot climb smooth surfaces, so you will never see my beetles climbing up here. If we do, there's something wrong. Um, they will not climb these smooth surfaces, so really you don't even have to have a lid. However, I have cats, I have dogs, there are things in this house that can get in there and harm them. Aside from my pets, there's other bugs that could potentially get in here and harm them. Now if you do get a lid, like I did, make sure that it is very, very well ventilated. These beetles do not need a lot of humidity, they do not do well with high humidity, so you want to um, make sure that this is well ventilated. So moving on to substrate. Um, so their substrate, obviously you want it to be more deserty. You want it to be more arid, dry. So it's very common in the hobby to just mix play sand and eco earth together. I did wash the play sand. I got it at Lowe's. I washed it really well and um, it was organic and stuff. So there's nothing harmful. You can also use any kind of cocoa fiber. Um, excavator clay I've heard is really really good. Stone desert from I think Exoterra. So you know the things like deserty and rocky. Just make sure that whatever you use is cleaned well enough. You can look up tutorials on how to do that. 
All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the decor. That is the fun part. That's the part we all like to do. So for the decor, uh, typically you can put some fake plants. I like to put some hides in there. I also put things like driftwood and choa wood. I don't know if I said that right. Don't come for me. But yeah, I mean, they're pretty simplistic. They will climb given the chance. They'll burrow given the chance. They are extremely active little dudes. So decorate to your heart's content and just make sure everything's safe for your beetle and you should be good. All right, so now let's talk about temperatures and humidity. I already talked about humidity a little bit. They do not need high humidity. I think that they need like max 20%. So make sure you have a ton of ventilation. Do, don't give them a water dish. They do not need a water dish. They get all of their water from their food. You don't need to mist them. You don't need to have damp substrate make sure it's dry they are from the desert as far as temperature goes they are good at room temp so 70 to 85 degrees is ideal for them i don't have any heating on here because it is summer and the winter they will be getting heating so if you do need heating and you can't maintain that room temp in here what should you do just easy just get uh just get some kind of heat source so you can get a heat mat however if you get a heat mat don't put it on the bottom of the enclosure put it on the side it'll really heat up that sand you know you don't really want the heat mat to be on the sand and then for over the tank which is probably what they'll be receiving you can use something like a ceramic heat emitter they don't require any special lighting so no worries on special lighting and yeah again they are very easy so that's all you need to know for temperatures and humidity so now let's go on to what do you feed these little blueberries Blue deathbane beetles are not picky in the slightest about what they eat. Now they are carnivorous and they are scavengers in the wild, so you want to make sure you add that protein. And I recommend when you feed them, as you'll see in here, scatter their food around the enclosure, they will go find it. So you're going to want to feed them fruits and veggies like squash, carrot, apple, cucumber, stuff like that. Again, that is where their water is coming from. So, And for their protein, things like mealworms and bloodworms, you can get them like pre-killed at the store. I use fresh mealworms for my own culture and I just pre-kill them before I put them in because they can bite, so. You can also give them bug burger, which I've also given them before. It's from Rapashi. I'll put a link for that in the description below as well. And also kind of a fun little thing you can do is you can add snake shed in here. They will eat it. If you do that, make sure it's like from your snake or someone that you trust. Don't get it from outside. You don't know what's on it, yada yada but they will eat that. They will also eat any like leaf litter. So if you want leaf litter, you can find some online, make sure it's like directed at reptiles and amphibians. You can also get some outside. I have a video on how to disinfect that and there's also tons of videos on how to disinfect leaf litter. So now if you get anything from outside for this enclosure, like a stick or leaf litter or whatever have you, make sure that you clean it properly and that it is um, safe to put in there with your beetles. I'm also going to link two Facebook groups that really helps me with their care. It's like a, a really good place that you can ask questions on their care, see if they're doing everything right. But other than that, that is pretty much all for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I definitely recommend these little dudes. These are some of my favorite pets and I think probably one of the best pet invertebrates that you can get for sure. All right guys, well, that's it. Don't forget to follow my Instagram. Link will be down in the description below, as well as my art account. Commissions are open, of course, and the link will be in the description below for that as well. If you don't have an Instagram and you still want to check out my artwork, you can always um, just comment down below. We can work out emailing or something. Also go join my Facebook group where we can just show pictures of our pets, talk about our pets and all that good stuff over there. Uh, any animals welcome. You don't have to have exotics, that's fine. Uh, it is all exotics, thriving over surviving, and the link will be in the description below for that as well. All right, and as always, give this video a like for the algorithm. Comment down below if you're planning on getting one of these funky little beetles. And of course, subscribe to this channel if you're into this kind of content or really any animal kind of content. I upload every single Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but you can hit the bell if you don't want to remember that. And as always, I will see you guys next week. Bye!